because of you You make me strong I know you're with me I know you're with me You make me strong It's all because of you All because of you All because of you Welcome to chapel today. We are glad that we can gather together. I want to say that we're thrilled to have uh, all of you here, well, or virtually, and uh, we're thrilled to have Mrs. Kathy Severson, our Director of Early Education, who is going to speak with us. I have to tell you, I absolutely love Mrs. Severson's laugh, her energy, her passion for teaching and for children, and she's just fun to be around. You know, one thing she really enjoys, she loves coffee, vanilla lattes. So I thought I would let you know that she just is, she's a barrel of fun. I really do like her. And so I think you're in for a treat listening to Mrs. Severson today. But before we listen to her, Let's take a minute and let's give this time to the Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you that we have the privilege of gathering together, of worshiping you by listening to someone who's going to share and help and encourage us to get to know you better. Would you be glorified through it and bless Mrs. Severson as she speaks. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy your time. Well, good morning. Well, with all this snow today, I certainly am glad I have my nice warm purple coat. Maybe you recognize this purple coat. I had this coat for probably five or six years and I wear it every winter day when I'm greeting kids coming in the morning, when I'm sending them into their cars at night, when I'm playing with the little preschoolers in uh, the playground. I have worn this coat. It's been my favorite coat for a long time. But recently I thought, you know, I think I want to get a new coat. There's nothing wrong with this coat really, but I'm kind of tired of it and it's got a little bit of patches here and there that are getting worn, but it's a very good coat. So I thought to myself, you know, God has blessed me with a job and with money and so I'm going to go buy myself a new coat. And you know what? I'm going to give this coat, I'm just going to give it away. I'm going to donate it to somebody who might want a coat that doesn't have a coat. Ah, oh, that would make me feel so good that I could get a new coat and then I could bless somebody else with this coat. But then I started thinking. God started to speak to my heart. He impressed this thought on me. 
Why would you give someone else your second best when I gave you my very best? I started to think about that, and I remembered um, the way Jesus clothed us. Jesus didn't give us his second best. He gave us his best. Look at this verse. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself out like a priest with beautiful headdress. And a bride who adorns herself with jewels. Well, those are some fancy words that mean that Jesus didn't keep all of his kingdom for himself and just give me a little bit. He gave me all that he had. He gave me the best as if I were a bride with the fanciest of jewels and I were a bridegroom ready for the wedding with the very best of fine linens and beautiful clothes. That's how Jesus clothes me. Wow. Jesus didn't say I'm going to keep the be my best. He gave us his all. Now, don't get me wrong. It's really great to donate things that you're not using anymore. In fact, it's better than throwing them away because people have need of a lot of things. But I checked my heart when God was speaking to me, and I realized that I wasn't giving my coat away to bless others and to bring them hope and joy. I really was being selfish. I wanted a new coat. And so the byproduct would be I would just give away my old coat. I was doing it so that I could be blessed myself and so that um, somebody else might get my leftovers. That was actually pretty selfish. I was thinking of our theme verse, trusting in the Lord and bring hope to the world. I remembered Psalm 37, 3, trust in the Lord, delight in him, dwell in the land, cultivate faithfulness. And he will give you the desires of your heart. That's my favorite verse. That's Psalm 37, 4. If I delight in the Lord, the next verse says, he will give you the desires of your heart. <gasps> oh, but do you remember what I taught you in the last time I did chapel? Think about our heart. Do you remember I said that in our heart is a big I? Not an I, but an I. Me, mine, I want. Yeah, I desired a new coat. So this verse was telling me I could get it. God gives me what I want, right? Well, not exactly. Our hearts are always selfish, but Jesus can change that. That's the good news. He changes it so that my desires are not about myself, but about others, that I want to give the best to others. In fact, let's look at these verses from the Bible that tell us why God actually blesses us. Genesis 12, 2 says, I will bless you so that you will be a blessing to others. 1 Thessalonians 2, 8 says, we were delighted not only to share the gospel of God, but our very lives as well. That means things that we, we have, that we do, our very lives as well. Oh, and look at this one. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 through 11 says, Besides, God is able to make every blessing of yours overflow for you so that in every situation, you'll have all you need for any good work. You see, God has given his very best, all of what he has to bless me. He gives me a job, he gives me money, he gives me a home, he gives me his love, he gives me his forgiveness and his mercy, and the ability to make a choice. To use it all for me, or to bring hope to others through the blessings he's given me. God blesses us so that we can bless others, not with our leftovers, but with the very best we have so that we can bring hope to the others. And they'll say, oh, thank you, Father in heaven, that you love me, that you see me and care for me. 
God's blessings overflow. So there'll always be enough for me. I can always get a new coat. But that my heart will think of others first before myself and glorify him. Some of you may know that I have two children, Michael and Elena. Some of you know them. But did you know that I also have three other kids? Here are my other kids. One is Rajili. He lives in Haiti. And then there's Deborah Esther. She lives in the Dominican Republic. And then my third child is Majwa. And I chose Majwa as my child because her name means my joy. And one of the verses I love is that uh, the strength of the Lord is my joy. And so Majwa, my joy. So I have these three children that I also share my best with. In fact, just like any good mother does, when I give my children presents for their birthday or for Christmas. I pick out something that they're going to love. I pick out something that is going to delight them. It's something that is going to show them how much I love them. And so I do the same thing for these three children. In fact, instead of giving my son $200 for his birthday for him to buy a present, I gave my son $50. And then I gave $50 to Rajuli and $50 to Deborah, and $50 to Majwa and their families. Well, my son bought a skateboard with his. He was so happy. You can't imagine my delight, though, when I received a letter from Majwa, who lives in Africa, and here's what she said. Thank you, thank you. We thank God for you, because with your generous gift, our family bought shoes, books for school, and a goat. <laughs> now you might think, a goat? Oh, listen to this. In the village that Majwa lives in, if you have a goat, you are rich in the village. You are rich to have a goat because it gives you a way of getting income because you can sell and make products through, goat, through the goat, the goat hair, the goat milk. Just through not giving Michael all the money, but giving my best to all th those kids. Michael didn't need $200. But by sharing that blessing with others and not using it on myself or our family self, by sharing that, they were so thankful to God because he provided for them. Can you imagine my joy? I was more thrilled to get that note and know what God has done and let me bless them through the overflowing of the blessings he gave me. It was better than getting a brand new coat for myself. Well, what could a kid your age do? Well, watch this video and see what this young uh, fifth grader did. and I gave my birthday away. My pastor at church asked me if I was willing to give up my birthday to raise money for a well on the other side of the world. We have a missionary who is working with people in Pakistan. They have to give their children dirty water that is full of germs. Many of them get sick from it. Some people even die from the contaminated water. We found out through our church that this missionary could build a well for these people for $1,500. I invited my friends to come and celebrate my birthday. The invitation said, please bring money instead of gifts so we can help people without water. I didn't really miss getting gifts because I already have everything I need. It made me feel good to use my birthday to help someone else. My friends were really generous. I was really surprised by how much money we raised. We were actually able to pay for the entire well project. The well was built about a month after my birthday party. It was surprising how fast that happened. They sent me pictures and a message saying thank you. When I see the pictures of those kids getting clean water, it makes me feel good. After my party, I started getting invitations from my friends who were doing the same thing. It was really cool to see my friends follow that example. I'm really glad I gave my birthday away. That well means a lot more to those people than anything I could have gotten for my birthday. Well, you know, 
you, there are lots of ideas that, I, that you can do, you and your family, but I wanted to give you, just give you some thoughts of things that you might think of. Now, these are things that you don't have to do, but things you can think of, and then also I want you to try to even think um, about it more with your families. But here are some things that I know people have done. Um, for example, you could have a birthday party, maybe a safe party with COVID, but ask that the gifts um, that, you, that they give you are ones that you aren't gonna keep for yourself, but that you can donate to a local a children's shelter like Lydia Home or a hospital like Lurie's Children's Hospital. That would be giving some of your best. Now there's nothing wrong with taking your old toys and giving them away. That's a very good thing to do. But think about how to give your best. Maybe by giving up something that, that um, you don't need to somebody else that's brand new might be a bigger blessing to them. You could maybe get gift cards or money that are given to you by friends and family and you could use those to maybe go to Target and buy, or the Dollar Star and go to get um, hats and gloves and those hand warmers and drive around Chicago and look for people who are holding signs that say they need help and, and give them hats and gloves instead of using those gift cards to buy something for you that you don't really even need anymore. Or maybe you could save up some of your allowance if your parents pay you for chores and then buy new toys or new things to donate. Maybe through Operation uh, Christmas Child, you could use your own money to buy the little toys that go in the shoebox. Or you could maybe ask your family to drink water instead of pop or juice or coffee shop drinks for maybe a month or so, and then take that money that you save and donate it to a clean water project. You can find them um, on the internet to give clean water to people around the world. Or maybe you could, instead of going out to eat, you could um, uh, go to Feed My Starving Children and pack up things for people around the world to eat instead of going out and eat at home that one time. So there's nothing wrong with giving things you don't need anymore, but think about how you could also give the very best that you have instead of keeping it for yourself, giving it to others. So you know what I'm going to do? I am going to go buy a new coat, but I'm keeping my old coat for myself and I'm gonna give that brand new coat away to somebody else. And every time I put on this coat, and I see the little stain, and I see the little bit of wearing, I'm gonna remember that because of God's goodness to me, he allowed me to bless others. And I can imagine that person who puts on, not another old coat, but a brand new coat. And I'm gonna pray that they are praising the Lord for his goodness to them, and that they are thanking the Lord that he sees them and he provides for them. And I'm gonna pray that that person would know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Pray with me. Father God, thank you that you give us good and perfect gifts and everything we have comes from you, the Father of lights. And Lord God, thank you that you give us each and everything we need. Lord, help us not to have so much that we forget that everything comes from you, but help us not to have so little that we curse you, the scriptures say. Lord, help us to give our very best to others. Help us to, yes, Give things we don't need anymore, but help our hearts to uh, continue to grow in your love so that instead of thinking first me and then others, we think, what can I give to others so that I can let my light shine so much that they'll praise you in heaven and thank you for what a good and gracious God you are. Father God, I pray that you would give ideas to the children and to the families listening to this message today. Give them marvelous and wonderful ideas and then Lord God, bring them back together so they can share with one another stories of how you used them as you've overflown your blessings to them, you use them to bless others. We thank you in Jesus' name. Well, if you do um, think of an idea and you do do something, I would love to know. So you all know where you can find me in the library, in my office, or in the hallways. I would love to hear the stories of how God inspired you and your family to give the very best of what he gives you so that you can bring hope to others.